everyone, welcome to class. Uh, this practice today is going to address cross lateral patterns in the body, particularly taking a look at how we often have pain that refers in our body. So for example, we might have pain in our right shoulder and also in our left hip or in our leg. Maybe we have something going on in our inner ankle and our outer knee. So there are these patterns in our bodies, um, a fascia that crosses the midline throughout our body and gives us stability. So we have fascia that will go from here to here and here to here and front body and the back body. And that helps us stay stable. And we'll be able to kind of take a look at some of those things in the movement patterns we're going to do in our practice. It's going to be a hybrid, gentle practice. We're going to start out with some somatic movements. And these somatic movements are very effective at addressing these um, imbalances in our body from right to left side. Another added benefit of this kind of a practice is we are kind of feeling the body, you know, bilaterally, and that helps us integrate in our brain as well. So we have two hemispheres of our brain and they need to speak to each other. And we're often kind of very linear in our thinking, meaning our brain hemispheres are not working together. So when we do things like crossing the midline and noticing different sides at one time, it's helping the brain to integrate and work more effectively. So we get stuck in these patterns in our bodies and in our brains and so doing Things like yoga, where we're asking our bodies to do movement patterns that maybe are a little different from our everyday living patterns, this is going to shake things up, right? So I ask you to do something that's like, oh, I don't do that in my normal daily life. It's going to create a new neural pathway in our brain. And sometimes when we first do a new movement, it feels strange, feels awkward. Um, we can't quite get our brain and body to work together, but the more we do something, it starts to become more automatic, like riding a bicycle, right? Initially, we're all wobbly, we can't quite figure it out, we're not stable, but after time, it's so automatic, we don't even really need to think about it. So, doing these new things, uh, crossing the midline, also working with right and left side, we're going to help stimulate our brain patterns as well. So let me see if there's anything else I just want to say here for our introduction. Um, so I'm just going to quick show you a little drawing. I want to thank my teacher, first of all, um, T.S. Little. Um, I did my Satya One training with him, and this inspired this practice. I've added some of my own things with it, but I just want to give you a quick visual of this fascia. So this is one of the materials from our class. And you can kind of see here how ankle to knee crossing patterns throughout the body. Here we have like our rib cage down to our um, outer leg. So you can see that. And it also connects up into the back of our skull. So we've got patterns there that maybe affect the back of the knee to the back of our hip. So there's these different patterns that we'll look at today. Okay, so we're gonna be on our backs for a good amount of time. So I put my cozy blanket down. It's cold here when I'm filming uh, in this time. So if you would like that extra cushion, comfort, warmth, put down a blanket for yourself. You might wanna have a blanket for your head. Um, we won't need a whole lot of props otherwise, maybe a set of blocks if you know you might possibly need them, have them nearby. But um, other than that, we're going to be pretty simple in our uh, props today. So we're going to come onto our backs and just take a couple of moments to settle in here. And as you settle in, you can let your legs come out, let your arms be at your side. I'm starting to focus on your breathing. And imagine that breathing along the center column of your body. So we're going to go right to left, but we're always going to return to our center. And then observing, noticing what it feels like in the back of your right shoulder. How does that shoulder rest on the ground? Are there any sensations there? And then drawing a line over to your left hip and noticing 
anything present there, particularly back of the hip. Is there any sensation there? How much does that hip uh, fall into the ground? Is there any tweakiness there? Just observing. And then opposite side, so notice how your left shoulder lands on the ground. Is it different from your right? Does one feel heavier than the other? And then drawing that line across over to the opposite hip, to your right hip. And just feeling that cross pattern. You might even notice your ankles and those lines that cross towards your inner and outer knees. Maybe even noticing the back of your neck. Are there sensations there? And then just go ahead and take a few more cycles of breath. Feeling your body as it is. And then we're gonna gradually get started on some of these somatic movements. So if you're new to somatics, um, it's a very gentle, slow kind of therapeutic practice. I'm gonna take my pillow out from under my head for now, if that's okay for you. And have your arms in a goal post position. And we're gonna do a practice now called Human X. Some of you have done it with me before. So Human X, we're starting to notice these cross patterns in the body. So first we're gonna take our right arm and lengthen it along the floor, stretch it long from your a shoulder joint and reach, reach, reach. And then notice as your opposite hip kind of starts to lift up and shorten a little bit and then release that arm back down. And then do that with your left arm, slide it along the floor, reach, reach, reach. Your head will probably roll over to the right. And your right hip draws towards your right shoulder as you do this. Your right shoulder blade might even push into the ground. And then release that. And now the legs. So take your right foot and reach it long. And you might notice a very similar pattern of that left hip shortening towards your shoulder. And release. And then other side, left leg, reach, reach, reach. Notice what's happening on the opposite side of your body. And then let it go. Now on a diagonal, doing both the right arm and the left leg. So I'm gonna straighten my right arm, reach through my left leg, and just feel that expanding line of energy from hip to shoulder or foot to fingertip and release. And then doing the other side, reach through your left arm, right leg, on a diagonal, lengthening, even noticing what you feel on the other side of your body and let it go. And one more time each side, right, arm, left leg, reach, and then left arm, right leg, reach. Good, and then let that go. And allow your arms to come down at your side, allow your legs to come back in to about hips distance. Okay, so these cross patterns are also seen in our movement patterns. So for example, walking. When we walk, one arm is swinging forward as the other leg is swinging back on opposite sides. So we're gonna replicate that here a little bit um, on our backs. So the first thing I want you to do is bring your awareness to your left arm and shoulder, and you're just gonna pick the shoulder head up and roll it in forward towards your chest. So I'm doing my left first so you can see that. And then I'm gonna release and do that on the right side. So lift that shoulder, roll it in. Your head might roll away. Now notice sensations here in your, in your torso, in your core, as you do that. Let's do it one more time on each side. Left shoulder rolls forward. Notice sensations in your torso. And release. And then right side, roll that shoulder in towards your chest. And release. Good. Now we're gonna play with the leg. So we're gonna take your left knee and just lift it slightly away from the floor as if you're about to take a step. And release. And then other
other side. Bend that knee as if you're going to take a step. And release. One more time each side. Left knee. Release. Right knee. And as I lift that right knee, I can sort of feel a little pattern here, especially toward my opposite hip. Let's do it one more time so maybe you can sense that. Put your hands on the lower pelvis, like the hip bone area that we, we sort of call them. It's the top rim of your pelvis. And just go ahead, bend that left knee, and just sort of feel some of these muscles tighten underneath your hands. And release. And then bend the other knee. And I feel that go all the way across toward the opposite side of the belly. But you might not notice it today, but if you do, you can be aware of that. Okay, we're gonna put that together. So arms at your side. Roll your left shoulder in. Pick your right knee up a little bit where you feel that. I feel it sort of here in my outer left hip and glute. Release. Roll your right arm in and lift your left leg up. Where do you feel it? I feel it a little bit more on the front on this side. It depends on where you're holding patterns in your body. Now alternate side to side as if you were going to initiate a walk. So you're lifting and rolling the shoulder head in, the hand is on the ground, and the knee just lifts a few inches. Go side to side, feeling this connection from your shoulder to your opposite hip. So right shoulder to left hip, and left shoulder to right hip. Notice as you do this and alternate side to side, there's just a slight shifting of your body. The head might want to roll a little bit. You can allow that. Let's do one more on each side, just feeling what you feel. So the somatic work, we really want to tune in to what we're feeling in our bodies. Now let it all go, soften. And bring the arms back up to a goal post position. Slightly different. We're going to lift that right arm off the ground and release. And the other arm lifts and release. Lift your left leg off the ground. Now to lift that left leg, my other leg has to get a little heavier and press into the ground. And then other side. So that leg's got to press in order for this one to lift up. Good. Now we're going to add in the cross pattern. So right arm lifts, left leg lifts just a few inches. See if you can feel that connection across your torso. And release. And other side. Leg lifts, arm lifts, release. And do that a few more rounds. Again, almost like you're walking in place, but this time we're actually lifting off the ground rather than rolling the shoulder and bending the knee. One more time on each side, feeling and sensing what muscles are working to do this movement pattern. And let it go. Soften everything into the ground and have a breath. All right, bend your knees from here. Have a little scoot of your tailbone so you're lengthening your lower back. Keep your ribs planted on the ground. So in other words, I'm not gonna do this. I'm not gonna pop my ribs. I'm gonna keep them grounded. Back ribs against the floor. And then bringing your feet up so that your knees stack over your hips. And then we're gonna take the arms up as well. Okay, so from here, reach your right arm over your head. Pretty easy. Maybe you'll notice something, any sensations, left arm. And back up. Keeping those back ribs planted, extend your right leg any amount. Notice where you feel it. And we're moving super slow, by the way. 
really, really mindful. And you might feel this through your core. Now let's try opposite arm, opposite leg. So I'm gonna take my right arm overhead and my left leg slowly out, keeping those back ribs planted. You're only gonna go as far as it feels okay for you. If those ribs pop up, you're not gonna go as far. You're gonna go super slow, other side. So now left arm, right leg, keep those back ribs down, keep your low belly down, and then back to start. So you might have done this one with me before, it's called clouds parting. So you wanna be super slow, mindful, and aware. This slowness actually creates more brain mapping than if I were doing it really quickly. So if I were doing this really quickly, my brain would not be registering all this movement. And I might not be able to feel the muscles working. I might not be able to make that connection from my body to my brain. So this is really good to do this work just to help reestablish our connection between our body and our brain. And especially, we're all in COVID time, pandemic time, we might be disconnecting from our bodies because we're so much up in our heads. Last round. Good, and release. Feel what you feel. So that was like such a really simple, basic exercise, but boy, if we do it correctly, we're going to feel that through our core, especially in those cross patterns um, in the abdominal region. Okay, have a breath here. Really let your belly inflate when you breathe so that your diaphragm can descend downward. Let's take one more so you can feel that sense of the diaphragm moving down. That's another area we have some cross patterning into the area of the, where the diaphragm attaches. So we might have tightness on one side of the psoas versus the other. So that plays into our diaphragm. Okay, let's try some arch and curling and we're gonna take it on a diagonal eventually. So put your hands behind the back of your head and we're gonna start out on the center line. So as you inhale, you're gonna press your elbows into the floor, let your solar plexus lift. So lift through your diaphragm area, arch your back away from the ground. And now as you exhale, you're gonna curl up. Bring your elbows in, lift your tailbone, and press your lower back into the floor. Inhale, come down, arch. Exhale and curl up. Press into that lower back. And repeat, inhale, arch. Exhale, curl, press that lower back. One more. Now we're gonna start going on a diagonal. So next time you inhale, come down, arch. And as you exhale, lift up and move your arms, elbows toward your right hip. And then release. Inhale, come down. Move your arms, elbows, shoulders toward your left hip. Feel that diagonal line of core strength. Inhale, arch. Exhale, curl up. And you're lifting your tailbone at the same time when you lift up. Arch, and there's a slight curling in. Okay, now adding on the knee, inhale, arch. As you exhale, you're gonna curl and lift your right knee up. And then come down. Inhale, arch your spine. Exhale to the left knee. And now repeating, coming up, curl in, one more time. So do this a lot more mindfully than if we were 
trying to do a hundred crunches in a minute or something. This is a little different. So notice that and then rest down. Take a breath. Breathing into the belly. We're back on that center line. When we take that nice, even breath through our center. Okay, changing it up. This time, bring your knees up again. And we're going to take our hands behind the back of the head. Inhale, slight arch of the spine. You're not going to maybe go as far. Exhale, lift and go over to the right. Inhale, come down, arch. Exhale to the other side. Now, if this is too much, go back to your feet on the ground. One more. We're going to change it up. So I'm building on levels of difficulty. So at any point, if it's too much, you back out and go back to the last thing that worked. Good. Now we're going to try and go side to side. So to the right through the center with a slight arch, but you're not going to come all the way down. Exhale to the other side, a little squeeze. Inhale through center, slight arch. Exhale toward that opposite hip and knee. Now, see if you can, inhale through center arch. Now tack your feet towards your elbows. Inhale through center, slight arch. Exhale, elbows toward your feet. Feet toward your elbows. Now you can come down in between if this is too much to stay up. So then you come down, arch all the way down and over. Those of you who want a little more challenge are going to stay up. One more each side. And then back through center. And we're going to let it all release. So let your legs come down, let your arms come down, and have a few breaths here. Just noticing and observing what you feel in your body. I'm just going to double check, make sure I didn't miss anything we're going to do here on our back. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. So just observing, noticing, feeling. Nice full breath. And then we're going to bend those knees, roll over to one side, and we're going to come on up into tabletop pose. So all fours from here. And I still have my blanket down because I want some cushioning under the knees. We're going to be there a little while, so feel free if you haven't done so, put a blanket down for yourself. So be gentle on those knees. Okay, so hands under shoulders, knees under hips, and let's go through the center line with our cat cows. So inhale, Exhale, pushing the ground away, rounding tailbone and head draw towards each other. Inhale, arch. So it's very similar to what we just did on our backs, just a different orientation. Rounding tailbone towards your head, squeeze into your belly. One more. And now release. Now, anytime you need a little break, you can come back to a brief child's pose. You can rest your head on your hands or block. You can widen your knees or keep them together. So anytime you need that break off your arms, feel free to take it. So here we go. We're going to try to bring that core um, cross pattern together again. Take your right leg back. Firm that leg, make it solid and tone your belly. Lengthen through your tailbone, so we don't want a big dip in our back here. So we want support for our spine, so use your belly muscles, transverse abdominal muscles to support your spine, and then lift that leg up any amount. And draw an imaginary line from that right hip towards your left shoulder. And you're going to drag your left palm towards your right hip. So see if you can feel that stability. And now release. 
take the other leg back, make sure we're toning the belly, making that leg firm and solid, lift it up. And then bring your awareness to your right palm and drag your palm as if it were gonna go over towards your left hip and feel a little bit of stability when that happens. And then let it go and feel the difference. Pull and then release. Some of these things you might not be able to sense today, that's okay, just do the best that you can. And let's try again, this time we're gonna try and lift that opposite arm. Right leg back, make that leg strong, lift it up, belly is toned. First drag that hand towards your opposite hip, left hand toward right hip, get that core engaged, and now come up on your finger tops. Pull the fingers toward that hip, feel your core turn on. And then maybe you're gonna lift that arm up and balance. Now these back toes might be tough, they might be flat, whatever helps you balance. Draw that line from your shoulder to hip. And see if you can maybe engage on that line. And release. Other side, take that leg back, make it strong, tone your belly, lift the leg up. Good, tone, come onto your finger pads. Draw that line, fingertips to opposite hip. See if you can keep that engagement as you lift that arm up. Maybe pulling left palm toward right hip. And release. And then let's come back and take a brief child's pose. Get off of those arms. Now if you don't like child's pose, you can just stay in table and put your head down on your arms a moment. Just to rest your wrists. If you can, come back, widen your knees. And then let's just stack the hands under the forehead. Notice the pattern from your hips to your shoulders. One more breath. And then we're going to come up again and we're going to do one more round of that balancing table. We're going to add on one more little um, variation. So this time, watch for a moment. I'm going to take my right leg back, make it strong and solid. I'm going to lift it, but take it out to the side and turn it up. Okay? And then eventually I'm going to add on that opposite arm, reaching on the diagonal. And I'm going to try to look at that arm and reach away from each other. And then I'm going to cross and pull it in, extend out on a diagonal, and then release. Okay? So let's try it together. Right leg back, tone your belly, lift the leg. Take it out to the side, turn the foot up. Let's just try that. And then bring it back in, set it down. Other leg behind you, lift it up, take it out to the side, turn it up, and back in. So let's try to add the other arm, the opposite arm. Leg comes back, lift up, out to the side, turn the toes up, and reach the opposite arm. And you're going to look at that arm if you can. Now if this is too much, just do the leg. And now cross elbow to knee through center. Extend out, lift that arm, and then release. So the reason for that out to the side turn up, we get that outer hip turned on, our external rotator. Let's try the other side. Left leg back, lift, out to the side, turn it up. Opposite arm, look toward that hand and reach. And then cross. Elbow to knee, reach again. And release. Good. And then we'll take it back down, either to our child's pose or just rest your hands. And have another breath there. Just a quick, quick release. And we're going to be coming up to stand. So if you do have blankets on your mat, now would be a good time to take those off. We are coming back onto our back, so if you feel like you need it, keep it nearby for later. And we're going to just do a quick transition to stand from our dog. So from your table, 
You're going to walk your hands a little forward. Turn your hands out just a hair. Tuck your toes. Now, we want to make sure as we come up, we're not going to get into a big rounded spine. So I'm going to make sure that I'm kind of um, hinging from my hips to come up. So I'm going to move my hips back and lift up. And then not flattening my heels. So if I flatten my heels, I'm going to round my spine like that. That's not so good. I'm going to keep the knees bent and lift the sit bones. So I'm on that center line. Draw the belly in. And if I can keep that neutral spine, I might be able to let the heels draw down. If I feel like I'm rounding my back, I'm going to skip that. And then we're not going to stay too long. Slowly walk your feet forward. Bending your knees, bring your hands to your hips. Root through your feet, and we're going to come all the way up to stand. Okay, so standing in mountain pose. So mountain pose is um, our basic yoga posture, good posture. We might be able to feel shoulder to hip, shoulder to hip, in the front and in the back. Widen your feet just a little bit. And we're going to do this walking pattern standing now. So from here, I'm going to roll my right shoulder forward a little bit, and then left shoulder. Good. I'm going to bend the right knee as if I'm going to take a step. Release. Left knee as if I'm going to take a step. Good. Now together, right arm rolls forward, left knee. Release. Left arm, right knee. And then just do that a few times. Going slowly. And now starting to notice as I do this, what's this connection here? So just a sort of a replication of what our bodies are doing as we're walking. And you can feel this kind of connection of the tissue as you do this. I can also feel it in my back. So see if you can notice the sensation of the tissue moving in your back on the diagonal. Good, one more each side. And then let's just come to stand for a moment. If you're not at the top of your mat, go ahead and come there. So I'll meet you there. And we'll just do a couple of half and full sun salutations to warm up a bit more. So as you inhale, reach your arms up. As you exhale, folding forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on thighs. Exhale, fold forward. Draw your belly in. And then inhale, rooting through your feet, rise up, reach through your arms, and exhale, release. So we're on the center line again. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, arms down. Adding on, inhale, arms reach, exhale, fold forward, inhale, halfway lift, step back, plant your hands, plank pose, top of a push-up, holding there, you can drop knees here, and then see if you can feel your palms connect to the opposite hip. You might even drive them toward the opposite hip to engage your core muscles. Chest forward, head forward, and slowly lower down to the ground. Tops of the feet flat, shoulders back. Inhale, cobra pose. Right through the center. Exhale down. Press to all fours or right to your dog. I'm showing modifications. If you like, you can press right to dog. Hold here a breath, making sure that the sit bones are lifting. And we're not rounding our spine. And then look forward, walk your feet. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rise up. Tailbone down, reach through your arms. 
exhale, release. So we're gonna add on, changing it up a little bit this time. Inhale, arms reach. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Step back, top of a push-up. Now, if you want that challenge, you can stay up in your high plank, otherwise knees down. Drag hands, chest forward, lower down. Good. Now, from here, we're going to come up into a fingertip cobra. So I'm just going to move this pillow out of my way here. So fingertip cobra, we're going to be up on our finger pads. So bring the hands out to the sides. Elbows are high. Press through the tops of the feet and lift up. So you're on your center line. Zipper up through your lower belly and release. Good. Now, staying up on those finger pads, lift your right arm and your left leg. Release. Try to keep your neck neutral. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Now we're feeling this pattern in the back body. Repeat a few times. Opposite arm, opposite leg. If you can, look down so you're not looking up at me. One more each side. Lift from your inner thigh so that your leg doesn't turn. And now release. Take a little rest. Give your hips a little shimmy anytime you feel back strain. To help that back strain, what's helpful for me is feeling like I'm drawing my tailbone toward my heels and I'm lifting my lower belly. So it's like a hollowing of the lower belly. It neutralizes the pelvis. Okay, arms reach forward this time. And these are like old fashioned Superman. So you might put your forehead on the ground or you can look slightly forward. Inhale, right arm and feel the connection to your left hip. Release. Lift left arm, feel the connection to your right hip, and release. Right arm, left leg, keep that leg neutral, the other arms are pressing down, feel that diagonal connection, release. Other side, Left arm, right leg. Hold it long enough that you can feel and register that sensation. One more time each side. Stay neutral with that back leg. So we're trying to lift from the inner thigh. And rest. Give those hips your little shimmy. Okay, stack up your palms with your right palm on top and turn your head to the right. Have your legs nice and loose, tops of the feet down. And now lift up your right elbow, just your elbow, and notice your left hip. And release. Now keep your head and hand connected. Lift your head and your hand and your arm. Slight twist. Feel the opposite hip. And let it go. Repeat that. Lift up. Slight twist. Now lift that opposite leg off the ground. Try to keep that leg neutral. And release. We're going to try a few more. Lift up. Turn. Lift from the inner thigh. Notice the opposite side of your body. And again, lift up. This time, draw your elbow toward your right foot. And release. So it just changes the vector a bit. Gives you a slightly different sensation. Lift up. Twist, then slightly down. And release. Now if that slightly down causes too much tweakiness, skip it. Lift up, leg, slight turn, and release. All right, pause there, wiggle it out. 
Neutralize your head, breathe on the center line. All right, let's switch it. So now opposite hand on top, left hand on top, turn your head to the left. I'm gonna flip around so I can still be facing you. And you're gonna just go ahead and begin with your head turning to the left. So from there, we're gonna just lift the elbow first. Notice the difference from one side to the other. So for me, I felt a lot more sensation when I lifted my right arm. And I believe for me, that's because I'm right-handed. I have a little more tightness on that right side. Now lift up, arm, hand, head, slight twist, feel that opposite hip, and release. Adding the leg, lift up, slight turn, keep that leg from rotating, release, and repeat a few more. And when you come up the next time, we're gonna start that slight lift, turn, and draw the elbow toward the back foot. Let's do two more on your own. Just feeling whatever you feel in that opposite hip. Good, and release. Shake it out, wiggle it out. Okay, stack your arms kind of in front of you under your shoulders. Now we're back on that midline. Press down into your arms, tuck your toes, and pull your chest forward by pulling your arms towards you. Give a stretch to your lower belly. Hold here another moment. And release. Okay, so now we're gonna try to change it up a bit. We'll do that one more time with the feet up. Press down into those arms. Pull the arms towards you, stretch the lower belly, lift the chest, and release. Let everything come down for just a moment. Have a brief rest. Gonna check where we're at here. Okay. So now we're gonna bring the arms in front and bring your palms together to touch. And you're gonna walk those elbows forward and then bend the knees. So arms are bent, elbows are bent. Now first, just try to lift your right palm away, like lift the elbow and notice the opposite lower back, release. And now the left palm slides up off the floor. Notice your opposite lower back, and release. Now lift your right thigh bone any amount, and release. And your left thigh bone any amount, and release. Now at the same time, Right palm slides, left leg lifts, and release. Left palm slides, right leg lifts. So you're not gonna go very far. This is a very, very small movement. One more time on each side after this one. So finish your round, you're on, and do one more. If this is too much, you can always go back to Superman's. Really works on strengthening your hamstrings as well. Okay, relax. Sometimes there's another pattern from our lower back to the opposite hamstring or the opposite knee. All right, so we're gonna press back, tabletop pose. Come into a child's pose. So we're going to see if we can keep knees and feet together. Move back. Hold on to the edges of your mat. Pull your mat forward. Get stretch along the center line. 
One more breath here. This is too much. You can just rest on your belly or do a regular child's pose. We're going to walk over to your left side. Bring your left palm back. Reach your right arm on the diagonal. And you can feel that connection from your shoulder to your hip on the same side. There's also a connection there. And then walk it through center over to the other side. Right palm is back, left palm forward. Breathe along that line of tissue. And then back to the center. Okay. I'm going to turn around back my other way. So we're going to try some lunges. We just check our time. We've got a few more minutes. Okay. So we're going to do some lunges. So if you want to pad your knees again, because this is um, a little bit of work on the knees. So I'll show that. And we're going to come and step our right foot forward. So for some of us, we might want blocks for that. So if we lift ourselves up, it's easier to step that foot forward. If that's not hard for you, then don't worry. No need to use the blocks. Okay. So I call these Super Mario lunges. My, my kids love, uh, love Mario. So it kind of reminds me of a video game position. All right. So we're going to have um, our arms moving like this. That's what reminds me of the Super Mario. And... When we're walking, right leg is forward, left arm would be forward. And we'll notice how moving the arms can help us do this kind of lifting up. So we're going to tuck the back toes under, and we're going to start with the right arm forward. And as I lift that thigh, then I'm going to switch the arms. Switch, switch. Yeah, let's give that a try. A few times. Now, those of you who want to challenge, I'm going to show another piece to this. Make sure these blocks are out of my way. We might try to stand up from here. So watch. I'm going to lift up to the lunge, and then I'm going to bring this knee up. My arms have switched again. And then I'm going to step back and down. <laughs> so, either sticking with just the lunge or see if you can try to stand up, okay? So starting with same arm, same leg forward, lift, lower if you want to just lower. Those of you who want to try, step up, and you can always keep this toe down if you want, and then step back and back to start. Let's try one more time. Lift up, lunge forward, knee can be on the floor, or lift up, and then reverse it, knee down, and release. Good. Okay, let's try the other side. So step the other foot forward, however you need to. If you want to use those blocks to get started, you can. And let's try a few just with the lunge, starting with left arm forward. Good. And lift up and down. Good. And lift up and down. One more like this. Lift up and down. All right. Let's see if we can add on that lift up. Those of you want to try or do a few more of these, you're still building your skills. So don't just hang out and let us do the work. So starting here, lift up, knee forward, knee back, down to your lunge. A little less uh, stable for me on this side than on my first side, so notice if that's the case for you. Lift up, lunge, back, knee back, and release. Good. And again, lift up, step through, toe down if you need to, back, and release. Good. One more time. Lift up, Step through, you can always take that little toe on the floor, back and down. We did it. Okay, step back from here, and one more time, let's come 
into our child's pose. You can also rest on your belly if you prefer, if knees are too much for you. Okay, so we're almost done here. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna have us come onto our backs. Because we're running out of time. I'm trying to keep this one to an hour today. So let's come down, put a pillow under your head, and we'll just do a couple more of these cross lateral things on our back. And then we'll have a nice deep rest. So starting with your feet flat, bring your right knee into your chest. And we're gonna drop that leg out to the side. Hold on the outside of the leg. Actually, let me do it on the other side so you guys can see. I'm gonna hold on to the outside of the leg. You do your right leg. I'm gonna do it on my left leg. And then you're gonna kick that leg out and bring it back in. So that's part one. Kick it out, bring it back in. No crossing the midline at this point. Okay, now if you can, you're gonna take this other leg out straight. We're gonna kick that leg out, bring it in, and now cross the midline. So you're gonna bring your right hand to left knee and draw it across. And then back, pass the leg back to the other hand. Extend, bring it in, hand to knee, cross. If you want, you can kick it out on the other side. Good, this is called pass the leg. We pass the leg from one hand to the other. The leg is crossing the midline. The hand is crossing the midline. One more time here. And then back to center and just hug that knee in and set the foot down. Take your arms out to a T. If you are comfortable without the pillow, I would say for this next one, slide it out because we need to be able to move here. Widen the feet about mat's distance. I'm gonna press off of this left foot, so you're on your right. Press off of it, drop that knee over to your left. Let your head roll to your right. Lift the hip so that leg is crossing toward the other side. And then release, back to start. Now, as you do this, we're going to start to reach that right arm. As the right arm comes across, reach through that arm. Maybe there's a little spiral. And coming back. And again, reach through the arm, press through the foot, lengthen, and come back. One more time. Press, reach. Head's rolling toward that left side and coming back. Okay, bend that knee, and we're gonna bring the other knee into the chest. So now I'll do my right side, you'll do your left side, because now you know what to do. Okay, so first we're gonna drop that knee out to the side, support with your hand, and extend and bend. Extend and bend, just to get that joint a little lubricated. Now, so you can straighten that other leg. We're gonna pass the leg over to the right and back and kick it out to the side. Pass the leg to your right. Maybe you're gonna kick that leg out. Only if that feels good. If it's too much of a strain, just keep the knee bent. And it's a big stretch here in the outer leg. Do one more like this. Good, and then release that foot down. And now we're gonna do that other movement where we're dropping the knee over to the right and your left arm and leg are gonna kind of go away from each other. So, push off your left foot, drop it over to the right, Look to your left and reach through that arm. Feel that connection maybe from one side to the other. And release. 
Also feeling a connection from my left hip and shoulder, but also right hip and shoulder. Release, and do a few more. One more time. And then come back to the center, both feet flat. Hug your knees into your chest and just a little rocking side to side. Bring your hands on the tops of your knees and circle them in opposite directions. So there's a little brain stimulation for you. A lot of us do this wrong. It's hard to get the knees to move in opposite directions. So like a figure eight. And then reverse, go the other way. So some schools of thought in the yoga world talk about how energy moves in our body. And this is something called the, the nadis, the channels of energy. We have one on the right side, the left side, and the center. And what happens, you can hug those knees back in, is they weave back and forth across the center line, creating the system of the chakras. So every time they cross, uh, the meeting points are at these different energy centers along our spine. Go ahead and take a happy baby if that would feel good. So you hold your ankles, your thighs, or your feet. How do you decide which way? Does your lower back lift off the ground. If it does, you're going to stay here. If you're not lifting off the ground, you can go higher and make sure your shoulders can still be relaxed. Rock side to side. So that energy moves in these crisscross patterns like a figure eight from the base of our spine up to the crown of our head. So all this work we did today also helps balance out the energy field in the body on a maybe more subtle level. Okay, hug it back in one more time and we're gonna come back to rest now. So if you want anything to be comfortable, I'm gonna pull this pillow back in for my head. Maybe you want um, your socks on or a blanket roll. We could put a blanket roll underneath our knees. So if you don't have a yoga blanket, that's okay. You can use pillows from your house to do all, any of these yoga things. We can use what we have. Maybe we're gonna cover up. So put your blanket on you for some weight and that weight can be really grounding for the body. And then just take a moment, shake it out, wiggle it out, whatever you need to do so that you feel symmetrical. Now we're gonna press our right shoulder and our left hip into the ground and release. Left shoulder, right hip into the ground, feeling that pattern in your back body. One more time each side, right shoulder, left hip. Release, left shoulder, right hip. Release. And now all four, both shoulders, both hips, press down and let it all go. Softening here, letting your eyes gently start to close. Come to a nice soft, soft breath. Notice how you feel here at the end of this practice. Maybe you're feeling a little more balanced from right to left. Notice the sensations in your body from right to left. Notice maybe things that were present for you in the beginning of your practice. And are there any changes in your body? I'm going to ask you to stay. I'm going to be coming up to sit. So take your time and stay where you are for the next few minutes. I'm going to tell you when to come up. All right. Let's check our time. Okay. So having a few
few more moments of rest here. Let your whole body release with gravity into the ground. Softening all of the front body from right to left, left to right. Release your right shoulder and left hip down and soften them. We're not going to be heavy on the ground. And then opposite, left shoulder, right hip, melt them into the ground. Just feel softness in the belly as it rises and falls. Take a few more breath cycles. You are always welcome to stay longer in your resting pose. Um, we're trying to keep our video to about an hour, so if you want to stay, feel free to let this video close out and you can take a few more minutes to rest. I would highly recommend it. Those of you who have an hour and you wish to conclude your practice with me, um, in the next few moments, just take your time, kind of start to wiggle about a little bit, fingers, toes, deep in your breath. Gradually make those movements bigger, stretching it out. And you can take your time to come over to your side and just pause there on your side for a few moments. And you know, yoga, we often go over to the right side, but for today's practice, just do whatever feels most intuitive to you. If the left side feels better, go for it. And after a pause there, go ahead and return to a comfortable seat and sit up on a blanket, a pillow if you wish. And just find a tall spine Sit bones drawing down, crown of the head reaching up, allowing shoulders to stay soft. A few rounds of breath on that center line. The belly be soft, allow for that rise and fall of your diaphragm. hands together now in front of the heart space. Have a nice deep breath in, allowing the heart to lift and exhale, bow your head to your heart. So thank you everyone for joining me. Namaste. As you go about the rest of your week, just kind of noticing these cross patterns in your body. Notice when you have a tweak, if there's something on the other side. Uh, notice as you move these patterns in your body and come back to this practice whenever you feel like you're kind of askew or your body is off balance and see if you can bring some more symmetry back into your being. I hope you enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.